Good morning. Happy Thursday. I have NeuroCoffee in hand and it is perfect. Man, that is really, this is really good today. All right. So either way, on the heels of that, I have a connective tissue question as well. Okay. Uh, so I was hoping you could use the example of like a kettlebell drop clean where you just you drop down and catch it at the bottom yep um and so i just wanted to talk through like the the muscle versus connective tissue representation as that happens yes sir so as you're dropping and like the weight's free falling with you essentially you're not really holding the weight you're you're yielding and your um your muscles are eccentrically orienting right until the moment that you catch it, at, at which point you immediately become, you stop eccentric orientation, become at, at that spot, the muscles no longer lengthen, but yep. you do get um, connective tissue yielding at that point. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Um, and if you, if you hold it for a period of time, yep. uh, is that where you start to get some type of like stress relaxation of the connective tissues or does that take longer that takes a lot longer um and, and when i say a lot longer it's it's not just a couple of seconds kind of a thing so you can get i believe oh like a standard kind of a representation when they talk about some of the uh, static exercises is like at least 20 seconds of exposure to start to get like the stress relaxation mm -hmm. up to minutes obviously um but but yeah with it within that within the 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 few seconds um what you're gonna get um if and i always think of like a spider web scenario here spider web tap the middle and then the wave goes out in all directions through the spider web right so if you drop catch and hold that's what you're doing to the energy so it's dissipating outward through all of the tissues until it sort of just dies off. It's the, you know, the pebble dropped into the lake where it makes the waves and then the waves disappear kind of thing, right? That would be a dampening effect of, of holding the position. So, so in this situation, um, as you hold it, basically you hit that position, catch the weight and you start to yield. And, and then over the time that you hold it, the water is seeping out of the, the tendon for that period of time, a little bit more as you as you go through like 10 seconds. It, yeah, it would, it would, yes, so the connective tissue would have to deform to allow the dissipation of the energy to occur. Yeah. Is that what but you're the, Yeah, but the muscle is staying the same like level of concentric orientation. Okay, okay. So here's what, here's, yes, yes, but, okay. You also have to consider the rate of of the the activity of the muscle itself okay so um are you you're familiar with the concept of rate coding yeah okay so that's a neurologic phenomenon right of of how quickly the muscle behavior takes place and when when you talk about like the off and on of motor units and things like that it's like how many so the concentric orientation right so the joint position may not change but the rate at which the muscle behavior takes place will so if the if the output slows down that helps to dampen the it so that's what gives the connective tissues its yielding capability and allows it to dissipate the force so if you were going to catch at the bottom and then try to utilize the elastic energy that would not happen. The, the rate of the muscle activity would stay very, very high to allow the tissue to recoil. You understand? Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. the difference. Okay. So, so you can't confuse, you can't confuse the, the rate behavior of the, of the muscle activity with concentric eccentric orientation, because that's a position. Okay. And this is why we have to have, have those, those physiological representations in, in, in part of this so you do understand because it would seem like well you're always going to try to dissipate the energy under that circumstance it's like no because i have muscle behavior the intramuscular coordinative uh, elements of it 
that would produce the tuning, Austin Ulrich, uh, the tuning of the uh, connective tissues. So is, is this kind of related to like when you said before that you're you're blocking the leg is swinging, it's about to make contact with the ground, and it's already slowing down. Um, is this basically like the tuning of the muscles from the nervous system that's helping to allow for some type of like connective tissue yielding delay strategy? To this yeah, I mean, it, it, the, yes, because, be, and again, keep in mind, so, so if you think about like a sequence of events, nervous system output, muscle behavior, connective tissue behavior, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so, so that whole sequence of events, there's an there's a, a amazing ballet of interplay there. Um, and, and this is why and anybody with, with small kids that just learned to start walking, it's like, that's why they suck at walking because they're just trying to figure out, it's like, okay, how do I coordinate all of this stuff all at the same time? And then eventually it becomes our second nature, right? Um, does anybody anybody play uh, guitar? Anybody? Are you good, Thomas? Sp speak for a moment. What do you play? What's your what's your favorite go? What's your go to? What's your go to jam when you got to show off a little bit? Oh, like music, like song. Yeah. Yeah, I like some Travis picking stuff, like a freight train, that kind of thing. You know. Okay. Do you think about it when you're playing? Not in the least. See, there you go. So, so it's on a totally different level. And so, so our behaviors start to become like that. And again, that becomes training. That becomes the repetition and, and such. And so the coordination just sort of um, evolves over time, right? right? But, but again, you, you have to look at this from an, the interactive standpoint. And again, multiple lenses, right? Nervous system output, muscle behavior. What are the options? Okay, under those circumstances, how would the, then the connective tissues behave? What am I observing in context? And then work backwards and go, oh, okay, so you hit this joint position. So I know that I've got I got enough eccentric orientation to get into this position. Um, you're kind of, or you ever see the people that dampen too much, where they land and then it takes like forever and a day for them to leave the ground after a jump, right? Because again, they're 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 incapable at that moment in time of tuning the connective tissue. So they have to have the intramuscular coordination to tune the connective tissues to allow the favorable response. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. And again, now you go back to physical structure. So now you're working backwards. You go, okay, well, why can't Johnny jump? It's like, oh, Johnny's a pylon. He's going to be a great accountant someday. Right? Gotcha. So in a situation where you hold at the bottom for like, we'll call it 20 seconds and, or 30 yeah. seconds. And you're yeah. just feeling like, hold the position, breathe, try and let go of X muscle. Um, what exactly is happening when you're letting go of the muscle? I mean, is it some type is of- joint position changing? Yeah. Okay, so if joint Absolutely. position is changing, then you're reducing the number of motor units that are that are producing tension, right? So you, you're basically training this um, like neural interplay to the muscle um, to be able to gain a joint position. But what, what's, what's the time element here? Like why does time help with that? Well, so, so you need time to make a change. Okay, is that fair? Like, like, like from the nervous system output to the muscle behavior, there is an element of time. Sure. Um, okay. And then that's some of that's going to be coordinative. So that has to be learned. Um, and so that, that time may change. So from an efficiency standpoint, as you get better at that muscle behavior, it will take you less time to accomplish that task. Mm -hmm. Plus there's a time related behavior in regards to the connective tissue, because keep in mind that, the, um, that there is a fluid content to that connective tissue that control, that controls elements of that behavior. So I need time for the, the position of that to change. So whether it's held within the connective tissues or is it being squeezed out of the connective tissues takes time. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so in that situation, there's, there's a degree of learning that generally takes place where they literally just have to figure out how to do it. But if, if you're someone who kind of demonstrates a lot of overcoming in general, 
the longer you get down there, the more water that flows out of the connective tissues. Generally, that tends to make the the whole learning process a little bit easier to happen because there's a less there's less of like a threshold you have to get over. Right, but it, again, it, it, that's going to be dependent on the individual as far as their capacity to learn something new, and then what what were their initial parameters in regards to my connected tissue behaviors. You can't make somebody into something that they don't have the potential for, okay? Um, everybody follows the general rules, but everybody's gonna have a limit as to what their capabilities are, which is unfortunate. We all can't be superheroes. 